topography is that this is 10, this is 10 foot lower than here, so it's roughly 35 feet down. There's a steam tunnel here, which we're going to go under. Um, there's a pretty deep hole here. Close to that rock is at 70 feet, so this goes close to that. You see how it's going to go down. Now, your interface to this job is this plan. And the reason is that effort does not want to recreate relationships that already exist or create new relationships. So just like governmental affairs manages the relationships with these folks, this plan through EAS mainly manages the relationships with contractors and you all and all the stuff. So it's gonna be an MSU job. It's 140 million in civil over three years, so that's 50 million a year. And if you remember that MSU's done a billion in the last 10 years, so it's a 50% extra for three years or so. It's something we can do at MSU. It's not, you know, it's a big job, but it's not, it's not impossible. You know, we met with the police and they have relationships with all these folks. So if the FBI wants to know what to do with it, they talk to the police. If the contractors want to know where they can bid on this, they go to the thing in October and learn about that. So that's the whole idea. Now that doesn't mean we don't want to talk to people, but we don't want the contractors to come to us and trying to get a better deal or something like that, and we don't want the police to sh you know, those folks to show up unless they talk to them first or something like that. So here's the organization in MSU, and, and you know the president is in charge, and he makes that pretty clear. So <laughs> 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 She sends these three line notes, you know, three word notes. Keep updated. <laughs> so, so then we have the effort lab. Congress runs that. He also runs MSCL on the side here. The effort lab is really three people now, but that's what's going to be there in 10 years. The effort project builds this thing, but the lab will persist. The lab will be here for 30 years. So that's why we thought it'd be important to make the lab now. So the users can talk to some chief, you know, Brad is the chief scientist. So, so there's some structure there that will, in 10 years from now, will really grow. But we make the lab already. And the other nice thing is because the NSCL director reports directly to the provost, so we're just leveraging that same um, structure we already have at MSU. Now, at MSU. Now, this thing is going to be audited. And so we thought it'd be prudent to make it First, we're going to make it its own MAU, but the other MAU calls at MSU until the new business system comes in. So we made it a new common unit, so it's a new department. And when the auditors come, we said, we're glad you're here. We came for, you know, department 299, so, you know, have a look. It'll be good. But we don't have a problem all over the place. Um, and one thing leads to another. And the reason this will be audited is just a big job. And in the Office of Science, well, it's the first time that a university or anybody has done anything that's big under property agreement. What they normally do is they have a contract, a letter contract, and the difference is like this. In a contract, the government has all the rights, and a subset of rights and responsibilities is delegated to the contractor. But the contracting officer has a lot of say. In this property agreement case, the government gives MSU a gift and says, We'll see you in 10 years, do some good. They're going to retain certain rights through this statement of significant involvement and say, do some good, but we kind of want to meet with you every six months. And let us know if you buy big stuff. So the government retains certain rights, but MSU has all the rights not retained. And the contract is the other way around. The government has all the rights, except for the ones delegated. So that's why I say it's probably going to be audited pretty heavily, because that instrument doesn't afford the government the rights they used to under contract. You know, they want us to see how they do something. <coughs> so that's me, there's uh, Eric, who's my deputy. Some of these folks are from URX Corporation. And I want to talk about that for a moment. The relationship with URX we have is, so when we bid on this project, MSU does a lot of construction, but we don't do any DOE work. URX does a lot of DOE work. So we have three people, we've got Bob and Eric and Gary from URS. They've done big DOE stuff. URS 
has given us those folks. We manage them like MSU employees. You can't tell them from URS except for they have these nice sweatshirts, which we need to get some of those too. <laughs> but we just treat them like our folks, but they have credibility with the government. This guy built 800 million with our lost work time accident to make nuclear weapons in Texas. This guy cleaned up nuclear waste, and he is a safety guy down out of Aiken who has done stuff for the last big deal, each of these installation neutrons tossed down in Oak Ridge. So he was the safety guy on the last big deal, the Office of Science project, and he didn't do a bad job. I guess he did a good job. So we say we want him, so the government comes and says, yeah, we know that we did good down there, it'll be all right. The government is nervous, they don't know MSU. So we want to reassure him, we get him some people that kind of dealt with the whole idea. These people here, you don't know them. It doesn't matter. The point is, these guys have got big up the project before. So if DOE looks at them, they say, oh yeah, they're good people, they're good people. And that's all they need. They need to feel good about MSU. And we can learn from them. So anyway, now I wanted to bring Garrett along, but he's in Texas on vacation because his wife is having had a knee replaced. So he moved up here, but his wife liked the doctor down there, so they hauled back down to Texas to do the second knee. He had done one knee. So anyway, that's the first thing. So Gary is this guy. And I don't know the folks who met him. He's a construction guy. I like him. It's like no BS. Well, we're going to have two books talk at 7 in the morning, so we're going to have a meeting at 7. Well, we're going to meet at 8. So it's like pretty. Anyway. <laughs> he is the contracting officer technical rep for effort to Jack Boomer. We're going to use Jack's contract. Maybe spruce them up a little bit. And, you know, Scott can tell you what the first one. But, but um, yeah, it's an MSU job, except for when the contractor wants extra, you talk to Gary first and he'll say no. And then, <laughs> you know, see how that goes. And the reason that's, well, this is a bit of a joke, but, but, but Gary is the guy who's going to be out there and, um, you know, Anyway, he told the gig, he thought it was kind of a 3% job, and we can start talking there, maybe get up to 5 Anyway, he's the hard ass who's going to keep the cost in mind. <laughs> and he's good at that. And, and, and sorry, there's another thing we need. The government likes this thing called earned value management. So you make a plan, and then that's going to be your baseline and you report progress against that. We've never done that at MSU. We probably don't ever want to do that again, but we've got to do it for this job. So we're bringing in, and, and sorry. And then the government says, you've got to get your system certified. URS is the firm with the most certifications in the country, and there's 21 of them. So they've done 21 jobs, Earn Value Management, ANSI 748 certified. And we've got to be one of them. And so we're just going to use their system. It's going to somehow interface with Skyler, we've got to figure that out yet, and we've got to interface with the new EBS system. But it makes the reports the government likes to have. So here's um, the notional schedule. And the reason I say notional is this bit about congressional appropriations. You can't know what's going to happen. But if the DOD plan holds up, this is going to be our schedule. So the project has started in June, and this year we need to make documentation that supports the uh, National Environmental Policy Act. But whenever the government invests this big money, they got to study the impact on the environment. We did, they did it for, with federal money for Mount Hall and stuff. So we need to support DOE in doing that. And we need to analyze alternatives. That's part of the DOE project. You need to write a report saying, well, we want to do this, and we're not doing that. And for that, you need to then discuss the things you have considered. Well, we thought about building it in Argonne. We thought about building it in South Campus, on South Campus. We thought about not building it. And then you have a report that kind of justifies why you're doing what you're doing. There's technical alternatives. You've got to say, well, we thought about building a big cycle tunnel with that idea, so 